in order to live a decent life. And so I'm delighted further to inform you that the first speaker in the series is, of course, Janet Graham Warba. We have an extraordinary guest artist speaker in Janet Graham Warba. She will share with you her career path in this crazy, wild world of show business, how she got into it, how she maintains her marriage, her relationship, a mother of two, how she supervises over 150 technicians and production staff people every day in creating what we as a public see as Game of Thrones on HBO and HBO Max. And now, without further ado, my great pleasure to introduce to you this extraordinary woman, Janet Ray. Um, I uh, did my undergraduate work uh, also at a public university. I was at the University of Virginia. My dad was in the military and I just happened to be where he was stationed. Um, and I was ready to go to college, so lucky for me because it was a wonderful school. And then I moved to the nearest big city because I didn't know what I wanted to do. So um, the two things I really liked were books and films, and I'm not a writer. So I thought, well, somebody gets to make films. Who gets to do that? and I applied to grad school, and I went to USC in a program called the Peter Stark Program. I don't know if any of you are familiar with it. They train producers. It's named for the son of a famous producer called Ray Stark. Did that for a couple of years, and then I went to work for a director, a comedy director, which is a job I highly recommend, because um, going to work with people who are just trying to make you laugh all day is so, so a lot of fun. We made a couple movies together, and then I developed some movies with another producer uh, at Disney, and got to produce fairly quickly because we got a lot of things made back to back, which is unusual. And then I went to HBO to interview about producing a movie for them, which didn't get made, um, but they asked if I would come on staff, and I thought, no, good, no. Um, I, I don't do that. I like to be on location and not inside the company. I said, I'll come to work for you for a year, and that was 26 years ago. <laughs> now I run production for the network. Um, that, that came about, about four or five years ago. And now that there is HBO Max, uh, I run production for the original programs that are made for HBO Max as well. When we launched the streaming service a little over a year ago for HBO Max, um, it was really clear that a lot of the programming for HBO isn't quite enough for a, a broad streaming service. Um, it tends to lean, the HBO programming tends to lean male a little bit. It tends to lean sort of very sophisticated. A lot of it is very expensive. Um, and we don't service uh, or haven't serviced as, as well as we wanted to sort of the family market in a lot of ways. So HBO Max programming is designed to fill in around that. But it also has its own kind of big and world building shows because we service the Warner Brothers on key. Now let's pivot and talk a little bit about how we make a show. So the first thing we do, a script lands on my desk and um, and uh, desk that's on my team. And we try to figure out what it needs, how it needs to be made, where it needs to be made, and who the best people are to work on it. So you have to build the show in a way that's sustainable. There's a really big difference in the way you produce a feature and the way you produce a television show for that reason, principally. There are other reasons, but that's the main one. My first question is always, where does this story want to be told? I don't always get to go there, but that's the first thing I want to figure out, is where does a story want to be told? And then sometimes you can't because the place where it wants to be told is too expensive or too crowded or you know, stages available there or whatever. But um, for Game of Thrones, because it's fantasy and because um, Dave Benioff and Dan Weiss were open to where we might make it, and they were the, the showrunners, um, we looked everywhere. We sent scouts out and then we did budgets for, I don't know, I think seven different countries. But what we kept circling back to is the, the sort of Celtic nature of the underlying books. Um, so this is a chart that we keep every single week and move things around. Um, I don't know if you can see the yellow sections are, it's a, it's a calendar that runs um, uh, 
week upon week upon week. The, the two, the gray bars in the middle are year end. And this is the prep, the shoot, the post-production um, for each of our scripted shows. And we keep track of this because the important part is the red bar at the bottom, which says, I don't know if you guys can read it, but it says available to air. Um, and that means that's when a whole lot of people at HBO and GMS can figure out when they can be able to start, um, when a marketing campaign should begin, when something can go out in release. But it's a real feat to work out a schedule like this so that you always have actors, you always have a director, and you always have a location for three units filming simultaneously in often three different places. So this was the, the brain trust of a guy called Chris Newman. So we did this multiple unit, multiple country thing, and he would be able to figure out that we would have time for an actor to work in the orange episodes, travel to Spain, get fitted, and be ready to shoot the blue episodes, and be back in time to be in the purple episodes two days later. And that was true for all of the cast and all of the, the work that had to get done. So just to kind of appreciate the complexity. It's a model that now lots of big shows do. It has the advantage of you get three days of work done in a single calendar day, and it makes it easier to turn the show around before the fans have forgotten that you're out there. One of the things that is super important in production is um, collaboration. There is no one person that ever gets to do their work in isolation, with the exception of the writers in the very beginning. After that, even they don't get to be isolated because they have to show producers and directors what they're writing and how it's going to get done. But production design is particularly um, integral, integrated. Uh, you have to decide how it's going to work with visual effects. Then it takes a really long time to do the design and the models, and then you're often having to build sets, especially the ones you're going to light on fire or do back again. Um, you have to move dirt, dirt around and um, create spaces that are safe to do that work. Um, so what has become true in the world building episodic shows like Game of Thrones is that it's bigger than a feature process, only because there's more of it. There were 10 hours of each season of Game of Thrones. That's 10 hours of material that you have to touch and post in that way. Um, and it just takes a long time. We used five different teams of visual effects producers and supervisors moving from set to set, organizing that work. And then we used vendors literally from all over the world. So um, in, in placing a show somewhere and figuring out how to make it, there are a lot of different kind of considerations. There's a basic one, which is what is a show worth to the network? So one of the decisions will be this show is worth X. And if a Game of Thrones or a big, fan sticky show is going to be worth more than something that probably more than something that's for children or something that is contemporary. Um, so you look at that. But then you look at where you're going to make the show and take into consideration all of these things. If you're going to work overseas, what is the cost of money there? What are the exchange rates in that country and are they stable? Or are they going to change on you in such a way that you have to protect yourself by hedging currency or buying it ahead? Um, most places that have a film in the community have good incentive program because they also want that that um, community of, of workers to have regular, reliable work. Um, the other thing that's fantastic about Game of Thrones specifically, and we've had this experience on some other shows, is that it, it, Belfast, which is where we're based, is a small city. So you get a lot of the benefits of the city in that there are hotels and there are nice restaurants and there are things to do for your cast and your crew on the weekends, but it's a small city. If you land at the Belfast airport, it takes you 25 minutes to drive to your hotel, and you pass the stages on the way. So it's an easy place to work. You can get in and out and be an unspoiled landscape in 20 minutes. When you bring a show in, people can grow their careers season over season. So someone literally who began as a PA was a producer by the time we got to season five. He was a co-producer on his way to becoming a full producer. Um, so that can be a good thing, too. Um, I think this is my last slide. Yes, I'm not nervous anymore. 